Home Assistant 2023.12 is around the corner or it is already released, depending on which time you are watching this video. But nevertheless, here are the most interesting things that have been delivered. There is a new login screen which is now similar to the ones in the operating systems where you have to click on the icon or thumbnail with the username you wish to log in. And then the password field will be revealed. The most interesting part here is that there is a check if the login attempt is coming from your local network and if it is not, then the usernames are not shown and the login screen will look more or less like before. That means you will see the new login screen only when you try to log in from your home network, which is a really cool security measure, especially if your home assistant is freely accessible over the internet. I will be talking about home assistant a lot and if you didn't join the fun yet, now is a great time to start your home assistant journey. If you need a little help getting started, join my totally free webinar where I'll share the official ways to get Home Assistant, some pros and cons and one super simple way to start on a PC in 5 minutes. Link and QR code to the webinar registration can be found on your screen. Back in September, a new look for more info entity dialog for thermostat were introduced and this new design was very good, the problem was that the thermostat card was not updated. So the situation was that the entity dialog looked much better than the thermostat card itself. If you wanted to see that cool new look, you had to dig into the more info menus, but not anymore. In Home Assistant 2023.12, this is now fixed and the thermostat card is finally looking as beautiful as the entity dialog and they share the same design now. If you already have the old thermostat card on your dashboard, you get the new look automatically as soon as you update to 2023.12. Home Assistant crew have listened to the people's feedback and desire again, as this was a very popular request. I personally am using a node for the climate control in my home. But with this new thermostat card update, I'm thinking more and more about switching. What about you? Let me know in the comments. Are you using the thermostat card in your home assistant setup to control your climate or something else? Next, by default, home assistant will store the state history for 10 days and the data for the older days is starting to purge automatically. So at the end, you always have history for the last 10 days. From Home Assistant 2023.12 and onwards, long-term statistics that Home Assistant had were combined with the history graphs into one, so that you can now query older than 10 days stats. If you look closer to the history graphs now, you will see where the state history data ends and where the long-term statistics start. Because there are some different colors and also the graphs have some different curves, that is because the long-term statistic is using average values. Nevertheless, these are just details that are not so important. The best part here is that everything is super fast and actually usable even on slower machines. How cool is that? Tile card now support numbers. This is working for helpers and number entities and will allow controlling the number entity from the tile card directly. It also provides a choice to use it as a slider or as an input with up and down buttons. Before this last release, by default, on a brand new installation, the Home Assistant automatically added different cards on the dashboard depending of the devices that you have. You could leave that way a long time, but if you wanted to do some changes, for example to rearrange, remove or add something custom, you had to press on a few buttons and to take the manual control of the dashboard. After that, you are free to change your dashboard as you wish, with one condition, you are not allowed to go back to the automatic dashboard control anymore. Now, in Home Assistant 2023.12, the dashboard has some new options that allows you rearrange, hide 
or remove areas from your dashboard even if you didn't took the manual control so you can have something like the best from both worlds namely an automatic default dashboard that will place for you every new device you add as a card and at the same time possibility to order, hide, remove or customize these cards also if you now go to settings, dashboard, add dashboard menu you see a new dialog from where you can choose what kind of new dashboard do you want the default dashboard which is the automatic dashboard or you can start from scratch with full manual control on top some new strategies are about to be added in this same add dashboard menu these strategies will use different cards and different showing approaches and there will be a list from where you can choose your dashboard strategy sounds really nice don't you think next the home assistant release from the last month introduced new to-do lists and now in home assistant 2023.12 there are some to-do list enhancements like these two new to-do services the first can list all items in a to-do list and it is accepting filters and the second can be used to remove completed to-do list items these services can be used in home assistant scripts and automations also when you look at your to-do list in home assistant you can now copy the link or save it somewhere and then to come back to the same list anytime the list can also have due dates and descriptions but for now you have to add those details manually using services they are working on making it easier to do that directly from the UI but we will see that maybe in some of the next releases few more things can now be connected to your to-do list like the CowDAV integration that can put stuff on your to-do list as well as picnic and our groceries integration which can help you manage your shopping list with picnic it even finds the stuff you add and put it in your online picnic cart unfortunately this picnic store is only available in the Netherlands as far as I know if you use blueprints made by others when you bring one in it doesn't automatically get updated if the original changes before you had to change the code yourself to match the new version now in the home assistant 2023.12 update if you try to import a blueprint that you already have a new dialog will ask you do you wish to override the existing blueprint on top if you go to your blueprints you will see a re-import button in the overflow menu clicking it will get the newest version from where you got the blueprint initially and will replace the old one in your home assistant as always there are some other noteworthy changes in this update here are some of them there is a new trigger selector that helps you pick triggers for your blueprints and scripts you can now use Kelvin in the core temperature selector if you have an IKEA EDSN desk there is a new height sensor the ESP home got faster and more reliable now you can see maps from your Roborock vacuums services with responses can handle responses when multiple entities are targeted VKR got lots of improvements the media browser lets you switch between grid and list view error messages from manual yaml setup are clearer and more detailed there is a new way to add selectors to your script field using ui errors shown by home assistant can be now translated we have some new integrations as well in this latest home assistant release we've got confovent on board and now you can easily control your ventilation unit linear garage door integration is also available and allows control and automation of these garage doors my premobile is also added along with various sensors for these wheelchairs our groceries integration is also new and we briefly mentioned it during the to-do list updates v2c is also allowing local monitoring and control and now you can integrate the wireless DVLED speakers if you have such devices there are three new integrations that can now be set up right from the UI and these are CODAF we mentioned it earlier fast.com to measure network bandwidth performance and ping which allows you to send ICMP echo requests don't forget to check the backward incompatible changes also known as breaking changes in the release notes as well as my smart home glossary if something is not quite clear for you Thanks for watching, I'm Kirill and until next one, bye!